ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fobal, an underground, highly illegal blood sport where strength, wit, and flair are the names of the game. Deep in the slums of Malifaux City, behind the saloons of forgotten frontier towns, or in this case, on desolate hills deep in the knotwoods, the denizens of Malifaux come together to settle scores, win hearts, and lose fortunes, or vice versa in the time-honoured tradition of kicking a gremlin as hard as you can against the goalpost. And I'm going to treat you to one such match tonight. So yeah, as my promiscuous gaming eye has fallen on uh, Guild Ball as a game I'd like to try, but being heavily committed to Malifaux, and still absolutely loving playing it, I decided to slake my Guild Ball lust by creating a Malifaux scenario that mimics many, uh, the theme and many of the aspects of Guild Ball. You can find the rules written down in the description, and this is me and Shotokan J giving it a playtest. So, for terrain, we decided to go with how the table was laid out when we got there. So it's much more terrainy than Guild Ball would be, but it's, uh, it's, this is quite an open Malifaux map. So we've got forests, severe terrain hard cover, uh, building and blocking impassable height lots, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hazardous soft cover, height 2, severe gates, because I do love me some hazardous terrain, and we've got some soft cover, uh, severe terrain, height 1, climbable, I think. No, not climbable, I think we said we'd push through it. And then in the centre, a big patch of severe terrain. And I've got to say, I really enjoyed this feature as it turned out. And looking back on the game, it's something I might consider adding into the scenario rules, because it really did make things interesting, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe not. Maybe so, I'll have to think more about it. I lose the initiative and set up first. From the left we've got a Bunraku, a Bunraku! Vasilisa with a friend to talk to, Mr. Tannen, Mr. Graves, and the Primordial Magic being proxied by a Changeling, because when you know, six models is just too much for me to remember. I should point out, just in case there's any confusion, this Teddy is my goalpost. It just had to be done. Hilariously, my opponent has also brought a Teddy for his goalpost. And for his team, he's brought a Bunraku, a Bad Juju, a Sillyrid, a Voodoo Doll, another Sillyrid, and there is a third Sillyrid somewhere, but they are so damn good at hiding, I don't know where it is. I think it might be over here. So the Henchman Hardcore format that uh, my Fobal format is based on doesn't normally allow for master-specific totems to be used. However, my opponent wanted to try out his Voodoo Doll, take it out for a spin, and so we decided to give it a go. However, for future games, I'm going to keep the rules format that uh, only generic totems can get taken. Not that the Voodoo Doll was particularly broken or overpowered. In fact, it made this game really, really interesting, as I think you'll see. But doing this, I think, leaves the game a bit open to abuses, uh, particularly I'm thinking of the Hungering Darkness which I think would be too strong in Tin Thunders and uh, Neverborn Crews. And I want to be as consistent as I can with the core rules of Malifaux, and so I'll run it like that going forwards. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this. I've got Vasilisa out. It's been so long. I really, really love that model, and she, um, let's just say, never makes the cut in my crews. I love the Bunraku models, but it's a bit difficult to take them when you've got stitched in a lot of games. And I've never run the Tannen uh, Mr. Graves tag team, and I'm loving the fact I get to have them in the team. So I'm getting to put some models that I really like but rarely use on the field. And something I find really exciting about this scenario is the fact that so many less than stellar models uh, in the normal game seem to be, you know, seem to have quite a good role in this one, at least in theory in my head. I mean, Celia is good, but uh, how often do you get to run all three? Just a few examples on show here. Let's come to the plan. This is the crew I want to take, and it's the only models I've brought. I reckon Mr. Tanning could be a pretty good uh, goalkeeper with his chatty aura and uh, discard cards to cheat aura, so uh, given that most models will need an 11 to score a goal, I hope that will make things, you know, just a little bit d difficult. The Primordial Magic can also make things insignificant, which will stop him from taking that shot. Mr. Graves is just a good kind of midfielder, he can push things around, he can do some killing if I need him to. The Bunraku are fast, can pull things out of position, and are pretty good stats for scoring, and Vasilisa can move like greased puppet. 
If a Bun Raccoon's got the ball, she can lead them up and then twist them to shoot. And she's got no bays. Potentially, if the enemy's got the ball, she can obey something to pass it to her. And then she can spend a Soul Stone and shoot. She's got a pretty good range with her defense 7. Yeah, I think she's going to be awesome at this. But then I look at my opponent's crew and I look at the scheme pool and I think, oh my goodness. I don't know if this was the crew he was intending to take uh, come what may or whether I should just credit his quick mind, but uh, this is a phenomenally good team for this scheme pool. And mine really, really isn't. So to go through my thought process, we've got Eliminate the Leadership. Vasilisa goes down to, uh, well, like wet tissue. And Bad Juju can, in fact, kill her with a single severe hit. And I could even Soulstone to prevent it and still not prevent enough damage to save her. Given how important she is to my plans, that would be a bad thing. In return, Bad Juju's got a larger cash than me is hard to wound and regenerates. Most of my guys do ignore his terrifying though. So while it is doable for me, I mean, Mr. Graves has got a decent min damage. He will definitely soak a lot of my resources before I bring him down. And Vasilisa's got to be right in the midst of things. And uh, yeah, I, this is this is bad. I'm pretty sure I know what he's going to take. We then got Dig the Graves, a truly, truly terrible scheme to pick. Spend resources putting down scheme markers. His guys just jump away and killing stuff risks losing points, so yeah, not doing it. Accusation also really difficult, as the Silurids just leap away, which leaves just the Bunraku and Bad Juju as my targets. So doable, but it will be fairly easy for him to prevent once he knows it's coming, and in turn my crew doesn't really have any defences against this, other than perhaps Mr. Tannen's aura. And then inspection, so splitting off your team to go stand on uh, at the flanks of the field. Not what you want to do when you've got so few models and... Uh, you need to be protecting your goal and scoring it with uh, scoring goals yourself. So yeah, that's not a great idea. Which leaves us with Claim Jump, which is pretty much just as hard as Inspection and more easy to deny by leaping Silurids. And uh, so yeah, guess which one I took? Yes, yes. On the other hand, my opponent can easily spare a Silurid a turn and uh, be doing that scheme to cause me problems. I went with Claim Jump because I figured Vasilisa might be able to help out my Bunraku with uh, the AP dropping, and the Primordial can hopefully help me out for one turn at least. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my plan. I'm pretty much looking at a truck driving straight at me, and feeling pretty boxed in. But let's give it a shot and see what we can do. Turn 1, a pretty great hand, so yeah, happy with that. I get the initiative. And normally my plan would be to push forward with Graves with something. And you will note I have deployed him just so I cannot do that. Good stuff. But I've got to get that Gremlin Ball in a single activation or the Silurids will get it. So Vasilisa goes, she walks up with um, the Bunraku, snaps the ball to her, unsnaps it and the Bunraku snaps it. And then she twists the Bunraku to walk away slowly out of the terrain. Asteliri rushes out to get stuck in, and Mr. Graves pushes another, the, uh, the other Bunraku up. More Silurids rain down on us, and Bad Juju is also plodding his way forwards. And I start to set things up with the rest of my team. So the Primordials come up and uh, nullified or made insignificant one of these Silurids. I don't know which one it was. And I forgot pretty quickly in the game, too. And then Mr. Tan's come up and tried to bore one of the Silurids. I probably missed. Another Bunraku, well, my, the enemy Bunraku comes up, and uh, they're waiting this flank pretty hard, so I'm gonna do something tricky. And instead of charging into the Silurid, my Bunraku number two just sprints its way over to the other side of the pitch. So when the, the first Bunraku activates, uh, it can punt it and make a pass to its friend, and so I've switched, uh, switched the play with the ball, ready to make my run next turn. But with a Silurid still in hand, my opponent counters and leaps, then charges the Bunraku. And during this game, uh, we're playing the tackle rule as a tactical action, so he can't, the Silurid can't take it on, on a charge. But we both agreed pretty quickly that he should be able to uh, tackle on a charge, and um, in future we'll treat a tackle as an attack action, I think. As it is, the Silurid goes frickin' apeshit on my Bunraku and uh, does quite a lot of damage. And you can just see the Voodoo Doll slowly creeping up the field. Turn 2. I've saved most of my good cards from the turn before, so I can make my goal run. But sadly, I lose the initiative. The Silurid tackles my Bunraku, leaps out of engagement, and uh, just in a position so he's not engaging either one, to either one of my models. 
Mr. Tannen hasn't got his chatty aura up. And the Sillerid takes a shot, happily spending an extra card to cheat. The Gremlin impacts against the goalpost with a satisfying splat, and the crowd goes wild. One point to the Swamp Fiends. A new Gremlin is placed back in the centre of the board, and since Vasilis is there, it snaps to her. Controlling the centre is important. She wastes no time in activating, running unimpededly through the uh, the swamp, skirts past Bad Juju with the Bunraku in tow, and then twists him for the shot, cheating my 11 to make it. And the crowd is beside itself with excitement. Two goals in rapid succession, and it's one point now to the puppets. The Swamp Fiends are happy enough to take that, as a very juicy fly has landed in their nest, or whatever analogy you want to make. Enemy Bunraku, traitorous Bunraku, comes up her over here and then tries to uh, snatch Vasilisa closer, but her high defense saves her. So Bad Juju goes in. He hits at Vasilisa, I stone for mask, and win the duel, pushing away over here. For some reason, I think he's got a melee range of three, so I don't just push outside of it. Sigh, so his second attack, I stone again, I also win the duel, and then I end up pushing over here outside of his, which I think is a three inch landslide, mudslide range. So Vasilisa emerges unscathed, but uh, uh, her pockets are a little bit lighter of soul stones. I can't keep this up. The voodoo doll is more than happy to hem her now at this point. And oh dear, I think I see the way things are gonna go. Defense seven is decidedly not gonna prevent me, uh, protect me from that. Back over on my side of the pitch, I have a gigantic brain fart and decide to charge Mr. Graves at one of the unactivated Sillerids, thinking to potentially bring one down, and so uh, limit his goal scoring capacity a bit, you know, thin out the activations just a tiny weeny bit. But of course, it's got perfect camouflage and I'm on negative, so I completely miss everything, and I, like, guys, I promise I've played Malifaux before. It's just... I'm a moron. So predictably, the uh, insignificant Sillerid leaps, snaps the ball, and then passes it to its friend. Its friend then leaps out, walks over here. Outside of Mr. Tannen's chatty aura and uh, cheating aura, and takes a shot and misses. It does need a 12. The primordial magic is slowly wriggling forwards, and I think has uh, uh, made this one, this Sillerid, insignificant. And I'm kind of torn now because I need to keep him alive to keep his goal st scorers at bay, or at least try to. Um, but I also need to sacrifice him for a scheme locker to score my scheme. Oh, things are just going terribly, guys. So we end the turn like this with my Bun Raku just um, going over here and dropping a scheme marker down. So we end the turn with the score one all, and the Swamp Fiend's poised to strike early next turn. It's pretty tense. Uh, we go into this turn, and... That's my hand. I think I need to save Soul Stones to save Vasilisa, so we're just going to have to deal with that. Swamp Fiends get the initiative, and the uh, Sillerid puts it away to the roar of the crowd and a shower of ladies' underwear. He then gets over here to engage Tannen, uh, I guess doing an impression of running the length, and I think his attack misses. I continue display to display my consummate asshat skills by going with Mr. Tannen, Boring this Sillerid to tears and getting Mr. Graves to push over to it, and putting up my chatty aura to try to deter any more goals this turn. The Sillerid gives not a fig about being engaged by Mr. Graves, leaps out to get hold of my primordial magic. The first hit takes it to its last wound, but then he flips simultaneously the black and red joker for his final damage flip, allowing the puke snake to live, and keeping the rest of the Sillerids insignificant. It's time to get Vasilius out of danger. I run away from the Voodoo Doll, who doesn't even bother to try to stop me. Twist the Bunraku to move it over here. And then run for the ball, uh, run for the centre, snapping the ball. The Bunraku snatches her back towards Bad Juju's clutches, but I get my uh, runaway home trigger and push back out. My striker Bunraku slips Bad Juju's clutches and gets her back over to here to the midfield. I need to set up a, um, a goal run next turn or perhaps get him into position to drop scheme markers, just something, I'm trailing points and I've got to pick it up quick. And unfortunately this frees up Bad Juju to charge, which he does, paralyzing Vasilisa, because I can't soul stone to prevent two damage, but I'd also stone for the mask trigger and so get away. No soul stones left, Vasilisa is paralyzed and in the middle of the crew. This is not good. 
The Sillarid comes in and tries to tackle the ball off her, but I uh, think but uh, fails. And I think we should probably change this so that paralyzed models automatically drop the ball. I think that would make sense. So if my last action Ooh, actually, I can't remember what I did with the Primordial Magic. I either tried to nullify something or walk it towards the centre line and couldn't get out of engagement. But so, <laughs> Mr. Graves is on scheme running duty, wa uh, walks forward, and just gets into range to drop his marker to score me claim jump this turn, getting the puppets a desperate equaliser. Turn four, and there's no, no soul stain, so we just have to suck up hands like this. I've got a nine of masks, I hope that's enough to keep Vasilisa standing. I think the Swamp Fiends win initiative and Shotokan J activates his damaged one. Um, I probably forgot to mention the Primordial Magic did Red Joker damage on it at some point, so it's uh, it's quite damaged. He kills the Primordial no problem, uh, freeing up all the Sidorids again, which is bad. Leaps to the centre and finally manages to tackle Vasilisa. Unsnapping the ball and letting this Sidorid over here snap it. Looks like I decide I'm probably not going to be able to stop this, uh, this shot, so I get my Bunraku over here and drop a marker. Considered leaps out of terrain, runs over here away from uh, Mr. Tannen, and top decks the 12, he needs to score! And the crowd goes bananas! Gups croaking their appreciation raucously whilst marionettes click and clatter with frustration. I hope I'm bringing this alive for you. Looks like something's been attacking Vasilisa because she's pushed away. The Sillarid in the centre has snapped the ball, and Mr. Graves has decided, fuck it, let's just get some markers down, I'm never getting that ball back. Um, so he's gone over and dropped some marker. The Bunraku snatches it into his uh, clutches, and a little bit of stabbing ensues. This Sillarid goes for Vasilisa, I think leaping towards her. Misses, and she pushes over here, and so he's forced to then try to run round and just to keep her engaged. Seeing that there's no way now for him to block my marker, my Bunraku, which had been engaged by the Voodoo Doll on this flank, breaks out of engagement and then snatches it towards him so that Bad Juju can't make its charge and start beating the crap out of it. And by proxy, my uh, my poor Vasilisa. In his frustration, Bad Juju then just beats on Mr. Graves, paralyzing him for next turn. And so we go into turn 5, the last turn, on 3 all as I score Claim Jump. The crowd holds its breath with uh, excitement. And fate is tremendously kind, and I might have the keys to get out of this. I lose the initiative, and the Sillarid with the ball activates, but Black jokers its leap, forcing it to slug, slog slowly through the marsh, and then uh, pass to its fellow crouching Sillarid by the goalpost. Knowing there's nothing I can do to stop that impending goal, I decide to preserve as many points as possible myself. Vasilisa finally gets to activate, so she goes and escapes the clutches of the Sillarid, running around to here. Um, she then twists the Bunraku to drop a scheme marker, and then spends the rest of her time running over here. Hopefully she'll be safe. If she can hang on and I can um, get one more claim jump, I can force a draw. Crouching Sillarid goes, takes his shot, and just top decks the 12. My opponent's been building his hand so that so uh, yeah, he, he couldn't have failed, but top decking it just shows this guy's class. And the talent spotters are nudging each other and pointing. This guy is clearly meant for great things. So as another gremlin gets tossed over into the centre of the field, the Sidorid then goes after Vasilisa. Because why not? What else is he gonna do? Mr. Tan activates, boards this Sidorid to tears, and I think tries to board this Bunraku to tears as well. I can't remember if he succeeds. I'm trying to limit their movement in a desperate attempt to stop them from getting up to my marker. Gimped as he is by the condition, the Sidorid still makes it, but can't quite get to engage my second Bunraku, who legs it away and puts down another marker. But then, in a huge twist of drama, the Voodoo Doll successfully disengages from the Bunraku by flipping a red Joker. Oh my goodness, the Jokers were really out for my opponent today, the good ones and the bad ones. And it flees as fast as its stumpy little legs can carry it towards the inviting claws of Bad Juju. Silence descends upon the stadium or hilltop. And in a move that decides the game, the Bunraku puts down a scheme marker and snatches it right, snatches the Voodoo Doll right back towards it. And for every single one of these snatches on the Voodoo Doll, I was just uh, top decking the uh, stab, stab, stab trigger. And every time it's just fate kicking me in the nuts because I can't use it. 
But given how incredibly fortunate I've just been, I can't complain. And in the last activation, Bad Juju vents his frustration, killing Graves, nearly killing the Bunrapu with the with all the black blood it's been taking. And with that, my friends, the game ends. The puppets score the last claim jump, and the first ever game of Fobal ends with four goals to the Swamp Fiends, no points for ex uh, Exterminate the Leader. One goal to the Puppets, three points for Claim Jump, making this game a 4 all draw. The crowd is in such a frenzy of excitement, they're literally eating the seats, as I'm sure you are too, dear viewer. And it's a match that will be spoken of from generation to generation. But wow, yeah, seriously, that was a hard game. The way that Swamp Fiend crew hard counted me in the scheme pool, not to mention some of my trademark dumb mistakes really made this one of the hardest games I've ever played in terms of just simply digging myself out of a hole. Really obscenely lucky to come away from that with a draw. And thank you very much to Shotokan J for giving me such a good game. And in fairness for pretty much teaching me how to play because <laughs> he remembered my own rules much better than I did. In terms of rules, I think they worked overall pretty well. This uh, flowed um, quite smoothly. Really, really changed the feel of the game from, you, you know, a uh, you know, from the more killing dominated that it tends to tends to be to really, really movement heavy positioning and condition tricks, which I really liked. And um, it's great to have the opportunity to field some of the less, uh, you know, the less uh, used models and just see the way the game opens up for them. So yeah, really happy with that and would gladly play this again. Some tweaks to make though. I think I mentioned them as we went along. Yeah, change tackles to attack actions so that uh, you can tackle on the charge. Makes them susceptible to negative flips, but I guess that's all in the, the fun of playing. I think paralyzed models should lose uh, custody of the ball, it should unsnap from them. Malifaux doesn't really have a random or a scatter mechanic to do things quite the same way as Guild Ball does, but I think that that would work. And so a couple of things I'm toying with the idea of is having some form of terrain feature in the middle. I mean, it really changes who can get in and access that ball. And also, passing was really was a really, really fun aspect of this. It was uh, really funny to, you know, boot the gremlin model between models. And in Guild Ball, that gives you uh, uh, an extra resource called momentum. And I'm worry, uh, and I'm wondering if uh, it wouldn't be an idea to add a little bit of a bonus to completing a pass as well, like maybe uh, if successful draw a card, something like that. But other than those, uh, the rule set seemed pretty solid, and if you don't believe me, try it for yourself. Take care.